if she knows what's up. So, well, with that, we can start the biohackers cooler, water cooler with Fernando from Orlando and Stephen Klein, the super connector, who is not here today. And sitting in for the super connector is Claire, not That's Claire Bear from Wedding Crashers, but Claire, the biohacker. That's right. And she was, Claire, uh, you were just telling me about your mic, how awesome it is. Please, please show us, show, show everybody why your mic is so awesome. It is the best mic ever. And I can honestly say that. I'm a researcher, like ridiculous. When I buy anything, if I think it's going to be a long-term buy, I'm going to research the tar out of it. And then I'm going to get the best one. And if I don't like it, I'm sending it back and I'm going to start over. <laughs> And I love this mic. It's actually a gamer's mic. It's called a Hyper Quadcast X. And you can just by tapping. So if you're on a Zoom call and you have to cough or whatever, you can just tap the top. You can't hear me anymore. Um, and, then you, and it glows. Who doesn't want a mic that glows, which is pretty great. The bottom of it is um, because it's a gamer's mic, it has a, um, it's like a, kind of like shocks for your car it has like a vibration thing so like if you hit the desk while you're gaming or whatever it won't um vibrate through your mic like that I don't think probably it's hard I don't know I've never actually done it before um on the back there's a knob that um has it's a few different ones so like the one I have it currently at it faces directly towards me but you can also change it so that it's um that's so weird like oh yeah just, i have the same yeah so you can switch it so that it's back you know one to one or side to side or omni um present which is you know pretty awesome um and uh oh and it has a built-in pop filter so this black stuff around it's a built-in pop filter so what? i love this mic i'm not gonna lie i really it's do amazing. I love it. What does this t-shirt say? Uh, biohackers something. Is it no. backwards? No, not at all. Okay, I was no. going to say because I was trying to make it not be backwards. No, it's not. It's mirror. Health and fitness. Cool. So tell us, why why did Stephen Klein chose you? Because there's something very special about you. He has Because the heart. other person didn't call back. <laughs> oh. And he's at a Joe Dispenza conference right now. And he, um, yeah, he needed someone to fit in. He, he said something about me being on the, uh, on the show before the other person didn't call back though. So I was like, okay, I don't feel too insulted. No, not at all. Why would you? I mean, I'm you were right fine. up there in the priority list. Yeah, exactly. And, um, so what would you like uh, me? So I have all kinds of questions already. Because well, go ahead and just you, ask them. Yeah. So all kinds of, first the light, the lighting. Yeah. Like what is that biohack? The type yeah. of light? Actually, yeah. It's a, uh, hold on. I need, I need red light. Oh, this is, this thing's pretty great. I don't think I can shine it at the screen because you won't be able to see it, but. Um, yeah, wow. it's a red light here. I'll shut it off for a second. Um, there you Fire go. Wave. Yeah. Nice. It's uh, it's hella bright, like for real. It's super retarded bright. Um, but it makes for a pretty nice scenery, I think, and uh, and it feels really great. I um, I was living at an in theogenic church for three and a half months and we had a few people that came in from out of town who just kind of like were run down from traveling a lot and stuff and you know got sick like they were already sick when they showed up and then it was just kind of like you know the first night they were just like oh my god I'm you know they were exhausted and they were feeling terrible and I there was one of those in uh the, the place that I was also and I would I took that in there for it's like three or four different people actually I mean it was three and a half months so it was a little bit it was a little while but um and I you know I put it right next to them and I told them I was like I would 
you know, uncover yourself as much as you can and let that light get on your skin as much as you can. And, um, everybody said it helped a lot. So. And what is a theogenic church? Entheogenic. Entheogenic. A plant medicine church. Of course it is. That's why you're here. <laughs> of course it is. Yep. That's right. Oh, it all makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Let me introduce you to Aww. my plant. Since wow. we're going to be talking about plant medicine. Oh, it's beautiful. This is Dharma. Nice. Great name. Hi, and Dharma. Dharma is the child of karma karma is back there nice yeah and she lives here in this glass of water okay oh, oh. i hope you keep that glass of water clean it is very clean i'm sure it is <laughs> um it's clean with a little bit of algae uh, okay. there might be a couple of treasures down there okay spanish coins <laughs> Things that are appropriate for the for the bottom of the ocean. Okay, nice. And, uh, I love it. It's beautiful. So let's let's talk about plant medicine. What is plant okay. medicine? What is plant medicine? Plant medicine is God's gift to people. It's the most real thing that I believe exists on the planet. It's the fastest way to take somebody that's been living in the system specifically brainwashed and just doing what they've been told their entire lives going through life like you know a robot and and I think that anybody that's actually listening right now that might be in that situation probably has an idea if they're they're that person if they're that person that's been sleepwalking through life and you can take anybody that's been living in the matrix and give them a heavy dose of psilocybin. You can give them, and, and, and set and setting has a lot to do with it for real. Like people that are like, oh, the last time I, you know, did something like that. And everybody calls them psychedelics, which I've heard is um, the word psychedelic even is propaganda. Uh, like kind of like cannabis was turned into marijuana and they did this whole smear campaign around it. I've also heard the same thing about the word psychedelics. So I don't ever want to call them psychedelics ever again. They are in theogens and they're plant medicine and they are a gift from God. Um, you can take anybody that's been living in the matrix their entire fucking lives. Are we want to swear. I'll try not to swear. Yeah, you can swear. I'll try not to swear. It's, I don't know where all this is being posted, but cancel card culture is i was gonna say it's express yourself crazy. girl no no, no, no. Bring it on yeah. be yourself yeah yeah i don't know how i yeah okay um i don't know how i been, haven't been kicked off of the internet yet but um <laughs> i think they like me for some reason i don't know why but um what is that to like you <laughs> so somebody that's trying to wake people up and heal them for real um, so you can take a sleepwalker and so I saw this in a documentary uh, about psychedelics called, um, psyched out. It was a fantastic film. And this guy said, I don't remember his name, but I think he's really big on social media. And he said, imagine, you know, people are in a big block of ice. And that's like their life. Like they don't, they can't even see outside that block. They can't like, you know, whatever. And it's like giving them a heavy dose of, you know, LSD, not, well, he didn't say heavy dose of LSD, but just a dose of LSD or a heavy dose of mushrooms or, you know, whatever else is like taking a sledgehammer to that block of ice and just like crashing it open. And that's a huge part of the reason why I love plant medicine, because it can take anybody that's been brainwashed their whole lives and wake them up like that. And I fucking love that. Mm. <laughs> it's way easier than. And, and to people that have no idea, have probably never had plant medicine in their lives. What when a person wakes up? what happens after how like what is what do you witness with someone waking up 
in in this in this context here so well, I was going to say I can only speak for myself, but I do feel like I could, I mean, I lived at a plant medicine church for three and a half months, so I feel like I could say maybe a little bit more than just on my own behalf, but for myself, how far down the rabbit hole should I go with this? Um, for myself, when I first moved to Florida, my sister and I came down here and I was so like, we came down on a road trip a long time ago. And one of the first things that we did was go skydiving. She was like, we're going skydiving. I was like, you're going skydiving. <laughs> awesome. I'm not interested. She was like, you have to come with me. She was like, if you don't, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. And I was like, oh, He's probably right. So I was like, all right, fine, I'll do it. So we decided to go skydiving. It was the first time either of us had been in a plane before. So the oh plane, <laughs> yeah. So the plane starts taking off and I'm like glued to the window, like oh, we're floating in the air right now. Like we're this gigantic chunk of metal. And the only thing that's holding us up is like air and fans. And, you know, I'm like, freaking out just like how crazy it is this whole thing exists you know and then the door opens to the plane and then I was like we're jumping out of this thing <laughs> you know I don't know if this is a good idea um so anyway that was insane and we did we jumped out and after we made it to the bottom, I don't know if it was that night or a couple of days later or maybe the next day or whatever, but I, I got really depressed. I was like, that was the most exciting thing that's ever going to happen in my entire life. Like, how could anything top that, you know? like happy adrenaline, right? Not like somebody chasing you with a chainsaw, which is not, I'm not into, I can't even watch scary movies. So I'm not talking that kind of adrenaline. I'm talking like, wow, that was great adrenaline. How could anything ever top that? So I got super, super, super depressed. And I very heavily believe in the law of attraction. And I started to think I'm going to have an unearthly experience, something something unnatural, like something supernatural is going to happen to me. I'm going to have an un, like, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have an unearthly experience. I was praying for it, which in my opinion, which in my head, I thought that meant that a UFO was going to come pick me up. It was going to like show up and be like, Hey, it's now or never. And I was going to be like, bye earth, you know, I'm out. And, uh, that didn't happen, but I ended up going to San Diego actually. And my friend Caleb picked me up who I'm actually going to get to see uh, in a couple days. It's his birthday. I haven't talked to him or seen him in years, but Stephen Klein was like, Hey, Caleb's in St. Pete. And I was like, what? so now I get to go wow. see him tomorrow for his, or two days from now for his birthday. So he introduced me to DMT to dimethyltryptamine. And I landed at the airport. Have you ever done it before? Not yet. No? You've been Not to Burning Man like how many times? What's that? You've been to Burning Man how many times? Only nine. Only? Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, you have something to look forward to. So I'm really yeah. happy for you actually. I mean, each year I do something, you know, I, I step up a little bit and the DMT, it just hasn't been falling on my lap. I I'm a little lazy for things like like these that if it doesn't fall on my lap, like I'm I'm not I usually don't. It's the most phenomenal thing I've ever experienced ever. I mean, like I oh my god, I needed it so bad at that like time in my life because I, I was so unhappy, just kind of like, what are we all doing here? Like, what's the purpose of this? I was so like, life is boring. It's predictable. People work until they're in their 60s and they die. Like the whole system just seems super just not anything I wanted to be a part of whatsoever. And it was like, how, like, there's got to be something else. Is there anything else? And 
then I ended up flying to San Diego and Caleb and his friend picked me up and I was like, that's what's up. And Caleb was like, Hey, we're going to go to Dave's house and smoke DMT. And I was like, what's DMT? And he goes, don't worry about it. And I was <laughs> like, well, if he'll do it, I'll totally do it. Cause I couldn't get him to smoke weed with me. So uh, yeah, he was like the healthiest person. He's probably still the healthiest person I know. So the experience that I had from that, and I can give you like visuals and stuff like that if you want, but please, the biggest, you want to hear? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. So, um, I'm a guy, I love visuals. True. Okay. So we go out to Dave's house. It's like, I don't know, 10, 11 midnight. I'm not sure. It's dark out. And the garage was detached from the house. So they go to open the garage door like halfway. So I'm like crawling under the garage door, like <laughs> pitch, pitch black inside. I can't see where I'm going at all. I'm like, you know, trying to make my way through. And then a door opens up in the corner and it's like a nice dimly lit, um, not, you know, terrible lighting kind of like situation. And like in the corner of the room, and it's like, I can tell it's like, you know, it was just odd. It was very bizarre. So I, you know, I'm going through there and I get inside. And there's another, so Dave was a large guy. Caleb is one of the, I, I, I love Caleb with all my heart. Like I love Caleb with all my heart. He changed my whole life. Caleb changed my entire life. Um, so I totally trusted Caleb, even though I was a little bit intimidated, like maybe a little bit more than a little bit intimidated. Uh, I totally trusted Caleb. So I go inside and now there's another very large man in there named Eric. And Eric used to dress up as Wolverine or Wolverine or the Incredible Hulk, one of the two for Comic-Con. And he played the part very well. He was fucking huge. And um, yeah, he was huge, but he was so peaceful. He was so calm and so still. And this was the first time I ever experienced somebody holding space. It was the only reason why he was there because there wasn't enough for him or Dave to do it. It was just enough for me and Caleb to take one puff off of it, which you're supposed to do three, but um, they had enough for us to do one. And so we ended up doing it. So, so, uh, so I was like, you know, in my head, I'm like, just breathe, just breathe. I was like, you're fine. You're fine. Everything's it's all good. It's all good. So Dave goes to light this thing for me. It was a little pipe and they put the DMT in the, in the pipe and he holds the lighter under the thing. Doesn't let the flame touch the pipe. It's just this, the heat. And I go to breathe this in and he says, because there's only enough for me to hit it once and for Caleb to hit it once, I'm supposed to breathe it in and hold it for as long as I can. So I was like, okay. So I breathe it in. I have no clue what I'm getting myself into. I had no idea this was like the mother of all psychedelics. No clue. Like it's like the mothership. There's nothing, there's nothing crazier. There's nothing more intense than, than DMT. So I breathe this in and I hold it in and I'm looking at this guy that's right in front of me. And all of a sudden I notice his skin starts to turn this deep bronze color. And I get this feeling of like being in ancient Egypt. And I, now I can see all of the lines in his face. Like I can see all the lines. Like I can, I can see his pores in his face. Mm. And I notice something up in the top corner, up top left. Um, I go to turn and look at it. And it was this little crack in the wall, like right near the ceiling. And I was like... I can see everything. Like my vision opened up my, like my consciousness opened up in a way I've never experienced before. I could see everything that was going on in that room. It was bizarre and phenomenal at the same time. And the walls, so they were silver. Dave Hitt was a DJ and he made tracks to DMT because why not? And uh, so he had soundproofed off the whole section of that garage so that he could blast music in the middle of the night and his neighbors couldn't hear him. So the walls were silver and whatever. They turned this deep red color and the floor dropped out and the walls pushed 
pushed out and it was like I was in a totally different room. And then I totally felt like I was in ancient Egypt. And I look over here at Eric and Dave and Caleb and they ha- they t- looked, I mean, it. I felt like I was looking at a bunch of Egyptian men. And I look up and the top of the ceiling, there's like these ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs that were up at the top of the ceiling all along the wall at the top. And they were dancing. And I was just like, I feel like if I could understand what was going on right now with that, I would have like all the knowledge to the universe or something like that. Right. And then I hear them be like, close your eyes, close your eyes. Cause you see totally different things when you close your eyes. Right. And at first I was like, no, I was like, I'm very curious what's going on out here. But then after, you know, like, I don't know, put me a few seconds, I closed my eyes. And the first thing I saw was these bright, bright neon, very straight lines coming in from my peripheral. And then they busted out into like these diamonds and stuff. And then, and then my whole world turned into a kaleidoscope and it was just absolutely magical. It was absolutely magical. And because I only got to hit that one time instead of three, um, I came down, you know, pretty quick. A full trip is like 15 to 18 minutes. 20 is a super max. I don't think, I don't even know if anyone gets to 20 minutes maybe. Um, but it's a super short period of time. Um, but you go places. I mean, you go places. You are not, you are not in this reality anymore. So the thing that it left me with was hope, really. Because I was like, life isn't as boring as I thought. I was like, if that exists and I didn't know about it, what else exists? What else is out there that I don't know about? And how do I do that again and see what else is in there? Because that was wild. Wow. So. I, I love the description. I, I could make my own movie here <laughs> while you were, you were. Uh, the holographs and the dancing oh, yeah. and the Egyptian people and yeah, uh, yeah, something to look forward to. Oh God, yeah. Land. So after that uh, instance of a few minutes, maybe it was less than ten minutes for you. Yeah, probably. What what decisions did you make? I realized, so I was always a big, well, I mean, I had always kind of known that the law of attraction was real, even though I didn't know it was a thing until, you know, later. And then I saw the film, um, The Secret, and I really started to put it to use. And that's where I'm going to have an unearthly experience came from. And I meant it like I was like desperate. I wanted it. I wanted it. And after that happened, it made me realize, you know, as, as much as I had thought like the world was boring and, um, you know, miserable and fucked up and like, what are we all doing here and whatever, it really made me realize I have no idea what's going on in reality. I have no clue how any of this actually works. And it really made me realize that reality is so much more, it's so much more than I ever had any idea it was, that's for sure. And if that kind of stuff that I saw just from that first time, and I smoked a lot of DMT after that. I smoked, I stayed in San Diego for a while and this guy would call me up regularly. Hey, you want to smoke every single time? Yes. And I was scared to do it every time because I had no idea what was going to happen. Never. I never, but I was like, I want to know. I want to know. I want to see what else is out there. So the biggest thing that happened for me was it made me realize that I don't know what the heck is going on at all. And I think reality is even more pliable and flexible and, uh, I don't know, easier to, or at least it's possible to craft it, to mold it into what you want it to be, because why not? (laughs) 
you know? Yeah. Like, none of us know how any of this works. So why wouldn't it be possible for us to just use our minds to literally create our realities? And after you smoke DMT, you will be like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, I love what you're saying here. So law of attraction, the secret, um, you having this now understanding, was it humility or was it something different that you have no idea how these things, how life works? What, what was the feeling behind that realization that you have no idea? Was it excitement? Fine humility. What's that? Humility, a modest or low view of one's own importance. Oh, no, I didn't feel like that exactly. I felt, is that, I don't think that was the word you meant. Maybe. Yeah, that's the word I meant. Yeah. Okay. So, so say your question again. Yeah. So, what was the feeling that you had um, when you, uh, the understanding of, I have no idea how this thing works, life. So, after I smoked it or before? Yeah, after, after. So were you excited then to go like, yeah. I have no idea how this works. I'm yes. really excited. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because before I was just like, I felt like we were all just, you know, I don't want to say we all, because I feel like I've lived pretty outside the box my entire life for real. Like I didn't go to any type of school. I've, I've been an entrepreneur like my whole life. I've been very outside the box. But I felt like life was just miserable for too many people, like the whole system, like the whole way, like the whole, like, it's like people get put on a conveyor belt when they're kids and then they just get run through this system and it's horrible, you know? And I just, I... I just looked at the world so negatively before. And after that experience, it was just like, what, what all is possible? Like I, I went from, you know, thinking that I was just a person that, you know, I could only have so much effect on the world to realizing like, and this is so true. Dr. Joe Dispenza will talk about this. Like we are interdimensional beings. We have so much more capabilities. We have so much more to us than we would have ever possibly imagined. And nobody's ever told us that. Nobody's ever told us this. Probably because nobody that we know knows. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, but it's wow. real. I love this. Um, I'm kind of new to Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditation. Oh. It's, it's been about six months that I've been using his abundance meditation. Have it's, you been Have you been meditating in general at all before or no? Yeah. Have, do you feel like you've ever, because it took me three years to finally feel like I broke through, like, and I, I was really trying. Do you feel like you've made it to the point that you can drop into like, a meditative state of mind and like sustain it or is it like a struggle for you the whole time when you go do it or yeah i i was fortunate because my first time in in learning about meditation i learned about hypnotherapy before i learned about meditation mm -hmm. so in in the hypnotherapy the first few minutes of a hypno, hypnosis session is about dropping in and relaxing the body and relaxing the conscious mind and being in trance. So I was super fortunate to have that education before learning about meditation. So when they, then I learned about meditation, it was it was a lot of ov overlap with hypnotherapy. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. That's very interesting. Yeah. So I can go three, two, one, sleep now, way down. So it was Jose video. Silva. I heard of Jose Silva. Um, I learned it from a different uh, teacher. His name is Marshall Silver. Silver, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I met him in person once a super long time ago. Oh, cool. Yeah, his his videos were super funny. Caleb actually introduced me to him. Oh, fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. 
Um, well, yeah, Jose Silva is phenomenal. Um, and that's, and I, I practice that when I go to meditate now still is, you know, three. And really I say, even though I don't feel like it's necessary, but that's how they say it in, in the book, like three, 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 relax your mind. Yeah. Three, 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 relax. No, I think it's body first. Relax your body. Two, 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 relax your mind. One, one, one. You're now an alpha. And it's like, it's alpha, right? No. Maybe. Uh, no, this is important. I feel like it's only because I'm um, a ring light in front of me and a microphone. And I'm like, I do this every day. <laughs> like, what? Why? <laughs> We're getting the gut is instinct is getting the message. So whatever words yeah. you use is just labels. Yeah, there you go. That's it's true. encoded with the information. Yeah. Well, he's got a lot of different books. And the one that I'm going through right now is about um, well, I mean, it's a I think it's a huge overlapping, like everything with the life, pretty much, but uh the the main topic is basically supposed to be about business, like how to, how to project to somebody else that you have their best intention and how to really like, really show them that and have them be able to feel you in a way that they, they know, okay, I can trust this person, you know, what, let's do business together. Um, so that's the main that's the main premise of, of the one I'm going through now. He has multiple, lots, lots of different books. Um, and you know, I want to go through all of them. I need to take a speed reading course. Right. Yeah, I really do. I go through, I use audible mostly. I've got Same. a massive audible library. Yeah. How many books yeah. do you think you have? I think I have 83. 83. Okay, good, good. We could, we could, um, is it possible to borrow books from friends? Because I have. So I think I'd be happy to let you log into my Audible account <laughs> if if Audible will let me let you. Because the last person I tried to log in, I didn't have any luck, and we tried extensively to yeah, yeah. that work out. And no, I was didn't. thinking more if it's like in Kindle, it might be. I don't know if it's possible to lend a book to a friend. Oh, you showing me the thing? Yeah. The success principles. TM. Success principles by uh, that's um. Jack. I've got a retarded huge like. Meta. Jinkies. Oh, I've heard of Jinkies. Oh my god, it's phenomenal. I heard of Jinkies. Do you know your time of birth? Yeah. You do? How do people sure. know your time of birth? Because my mom said she saw the watch when uh, right after she had me. I mean, there was a clock on the wall, she said. <clears throat> All right. Well, do you want to do something pretty wild? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, let's see here. This is going to be fun. I personally, okay, so I have like a gigantic living library of um of people in my um uh in that ha like I have a bunch of people's different uh gene keys oh. and charts I have a bunch of different people's charts because my thing is manifesting idealism mm. so if I'm going to manifest idealism in the world I need to know where everybody goes. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, if if I know that this is something that you're good at and see really Steven's the best person to, to do this, I need to just tell him like, hey, those two people need to go together because <laughs> he'll, he'll be on that like way faster than I will because just, that's just how it is. I don't know how yeah. he keeps up with, I don't know how he keeps up with everybody. He keeps up with everybody. Like, yeah, he does. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I don't know how he does it. Okay, so. I think when he had a car accident and he went through all the surgeries, so, uh, the doctor might have dropped something in the brain and that helps him like activate his connection mechanisms. I don't know. That would be, that would be great to know though, because I just don't know how he does it. 
I mean, I think it might have something to do with the fact that, like, I think he just looks at life totally differently now. It's like a gift every day. Mm, yeah. Um, but I still don't understand how the how he how he does what he does. I would never like I just I couldn't. I just couldn't handle that. But I'm an introvert. I'm not an extrovert. He's an extrovert. I just couldn't do it. Right, right, right. No chance. I've seen him be both. I've seen him be in an introvert too. Sure, but he's an extrovert at his core. He's an extrovert. There's no no introvert could ever do what he does. Never, on a long term basis, not a chance. You know what? I'll you want to you want to bet? I bet five dollars that he <laughs> would consider himself an introvert. Well, I don't care what he considers himself. He's an extrovert. He is not an introvert. It doesn't okay. matter. Yeah, there's no possible, like, there's not even, there's no, cons- I am an introvert. He is not an introvert. I know this. Okay. Yes, I know this. Okay. What was your birth city, Fernando? Sao Paulo, Brazil. Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo. Got it. Here, maybe I should share this screen with you. Can I share? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my whole screen or just my? Just your. Okay, good. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, date, the day? Uh, 29. Month? 7. July. July, yeah. year 80 1980 and then time 7 30 a.m or p.m a.m and you're pretty sure or positive that that's it according to my mother well she's probably the the one that would know so okay i put in my email my um uh like you know junk mail email do you want to i mean i i get um stuff from them would you like me to put it in your email or no yeah what is it it's f lopez as in s uh s is in sweet oh yeah mm -hmm. jr okay. at gmail.com Okay. Do you want me to push? Yes. Join the newsletter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's this has been, oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. The person that introduced me to Gene Keys, we had an amazing conversation that took, I think he went the entire day. It was amazing. Nice. Okay. So you can tell me if, <clears throat> if this sounds accurate or. And I can have Siri read this, which is pretty, uh, it makes it a lot easier. It's Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we'll start off with, and then I'm going to start it and you can tell me if you want um, me to slow it down. Okay. Genius, my deepest purpose in life is to manifest the gift of teamwork. To realize my purpose, I need to transform the shadow of interference, love, and relationships. My greatest challenge is to transform the shadow of half-heartedness into the gift of commitment. The highest expression of my heart is communion, prosperity. I unlock my prosperity through my gift of intimacy. I undermine my prosperity through the shadow of dishonesty. I thrive best as an entrepreneur. Damn. Yeah, that's the tip of the iceberg, Fernando. Wow. really deep. <laughs> Okay, so if that wasn't too fast, then because that was the fastest it's going to be because the the words and stuff were in an odd way or whatever. Yeah. So this will be um, this will be easier. Okay, so your life's work, what you're here to do. So we're going to start off here. Did do you want me to slow it down at all, or is it okay? That's okay. Okay. All right. Ready? This is pretty wild. All right. Let's go. Okay. I hope you're excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> my life's work what i'm here to do gene key 31 you need to come to a place inside yourself where you no longer worry about what others think of you you can only really know this space when you move into your heart once you express what is in your heart 
you will feel secure about what you are saying, and you will no longer need to worry about how things turn out. You are at your best when working in a small team, even though that team may be part of a larger framework or organization. If you relax and make sure that you express yourself at the right times, what you say will have great impact on your listeners. There is something about your approach to life that is very cutting edge, so it is easy for you to be misunderstood. The secret for you is always timing. Never force your point of view on anyone. Let them come to you. If they don't, be thankful that you haven't wasted your valuable time and considerable resources in the wrong place. Nice. Boom. (laughs) What do you think about that? Yeah, it's very true. It's very, very true. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, the second part. I wanted to see one thing here. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right. Your evolution, what you're here to learn. All right. My evolution, what I'm here to learn, Gene Key 41. Your test in life is to maintain a balance between what you want to happen and what is actually happening. You are a natural leader of others, and this responsibility needs to be grounded in reality. There is a persistent urge in you to go beyond the boundaries of the status quo, and it is this urge that makes you unique. You need to push the limits of whatever you are doing, but you need to do this methodically and practically. It will take time for others to catch you up, and you need to have patience, but not too much patience. As a leader, it is your job to pull people out of the past towards the future. Let them feel the sparks of your dream and keep the fires burning, but don't burn the whole building down. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) okay okay i won't burn it down fine (laughs) yeah that sounds great because pulling people out of the past is like to me that sounds like my version of waking people up Mm. awesome okay your radiance what keeps you healthy gene key 24 my radiance what keeps me healthy gene key 24 more than anything in your life you need a sense of spaciousness you may lead an extremely busy life but you need to have an inner oasis that you can visit regularly. Most important for you is to have silence in your life, a place where you cannot be disturbed and that is yours alone. Some people create this feeling through activities such as meditation or even sports. For you to really shine in the world, you need something that allows you to switch off from your outer life entirely. You also need to replicate this feeling externally through an actual physical space that belongs only to you. This space needs to be as uncluttered as possible. It could even be empty. Such a space symbolizes an inner space that frequently arises within you. You must learn to identify when you are ignoring or avoiding these times because they are filled with magic. It is through this inner space that all your great insights and transformations emerge. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm what do you think at about the... that one for real? That one, to me, that, that one means a lot because I, I have one for the, what keeps me healthy, very similar to that one. I'm looking over there. The the there's an I have a keyboard now, like a piano keyboard, and um, so I'm looking at it. And the it's now the second week that once a day I go and I play, mm. and I'm new to playing, so I'm learning how to play. Um, and it feels like as as I was reading this, listening that that might be one of the places for me to totally. Uh, unplug and yeah I don't know where this thought comes from but I feel like maybe experimenting with like essential oils over there like while you play might be a might be a beneficial idea for some reason what is is essential oil oh nice what is that thing it's um it's a diffuser Oh, okay. Awesome. So yeah. super tiny diffuser. Yeah, it came, it's like on the go. It came uh, in the box, in the biohacked box from Dave Asprey. Nice. So, yeah. Oh, so, were you with that thing in LA? Um, 2015 and 2016. Yes, but not since then. Okay. That's, well, that's awesome. Yeah. Very Have you cool. been? No, uh, haven't I have not been to to that. Um, it was the two conferences uh, that I saw, I felt being around the healthiest people ever. Interesting. People not only they exuded health through their pores, through their eyes, their hair, their skin, uh, smiles. It was like, wow, these people here are so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. 
amazing. Why haven't you been back since then? Did, was it not like an impressive event or just time or? Because Stephen haven't has not hooked me up with tickets. He <laughs> hooked me up with tickets two years well, in a row. You need to get on him because he can get it. Like, I'm pretty sure he can get anybody into like anything. So That's true. I, I've been, yeah, I've been waiting. Sometimes I'm too, uh, I'm waiting too much for things to fall in my lap. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. So that's something that we need to find out about you is if you, so, okay. So Jean Keys is a very poetic, very beautiful, very easy to understand version of human design. Human design is like learning a new language. Um, it's very complicated. It's very different. There's symbols, there's patterns, there's colors, there's shapes, there's, oh my God, like it's, 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 you know, human design slang. There's like all kinds of stuff that does not make any sense whatsoever. And it's like literally learning a new language. However, um, Gene Keys was basically born out of human design. And human design was pretty much born out of the Chinese I Ching, which has been around forever. So human design is basically like, here's your life blueprint. If you want to live your best possible life ever, these are the potential realities that you should go for. Gene Keys is left is, is way more open to interpretation than human design is. Um, so it's, it's, it's more, it's, it's clear, sort of, it's direct, sort of, it's poetry that's left open to interpretation. So we need to look at your actual chart here in a minute, but let's look at, um, let's look at your, uh, your purpose. What deeply fulfills you first here. Ready? Ready. Okay. My purpose, what deeply fulfills me? Gene Key 44, one's inner purpose is always a byproduct of fulfilling one's life's work. In your case, it concerns what some people call a soul group. Your soul group, or fractal, consists of those people with whom you have an unconscious genetic contact. As you follow your destiny, these people will gradually assemble in your life, and you will learn to recognize them the moment they appear. For you, it is like meeting old friends. Such relationships never leave your life, even if you do not see each other for years. Because certain people hold keys for you in life, your purpose must wait for you to meet them. You cannot hurry this process, and you cannot force it. Only by relaxing and enjoying your life will they appear at the appointed time. If what you are doing is authentic, they will appear just at the right time. Well, that sounds pretty magical. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty magical. And it's been a lesson in, of life for me to surrender to the right time. Hmm. So it's been like a, a life's journey to, especially in the last tw 12 months, uh, I read, I listened to the audiobook, The Surrender Experiment. And Who I was one? Michael Singer. Oh, okay. And I was able to realize that I had been living my life exercising 50% of the surrender experiment. And I, I was like, you know what? What will happen if I do it at 90% or 95%? or 99. So I've been in a dance in the last uh, 12 months or so of doing as much as possible of the surrender experiment, which is relaxing, and then doing the letting go of what others, what I think others may think of me, mm. and uh, relaxing and enjoying life. And letting the the people, my soul group, uh, appear. And I think I met one yesterday. Nice. Yeah. What, what was, was the what was the feeling that made you think that? It was the conversations this person was having with me was would I would consider to be like conversations that would be conversation to have a, with an old friend or a very trusted friend. Hmm. Information about business about powerful connections and i'm thinking wow they're sharing all of that with me 
all right, cool. Oh yeah, of course they're sharing with me because I am me. It's it, it's Fernando. <laughs> so of course they would do that. Yeah. So yeah. Um so yeah, this what I just listened here and 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 read here feels like it's something that I've been practicing for the last six months. Well, there you go. Awesome. Yeah. Oh wow, um, they're pictures. I love pictures. Yeah, this is um this goes into oh my god, Fernando. This is, I mean the whole thing, like every single every single chart that I could show you is the tip of a gigantic iceberg into you know more. Um but um oh god, I like it's a lot. It's honestly it's a lot. Um so I'm going to do a quick scan here, though. Um, yeah, if you want to try to log into my Audible account, I'd be happy to, to oh. get you in there. This oh, no, that's fine. I'll, I think I, I have a couple of credits. I'll just get the book. I actually may have the book. Let me check my Audible. It's extensive it's like a 500 page book um wow. but it's so great like so i i um i was in austin this is like um a few years ago and uh, at a mushroom ceremony and i had a phenomenal conversation with a guy named jeremy who was the first person ever to, oh, we share, well, it's not exactly technically sharing one of the keys, but um, he actually gave me hope for, like, I had always seen the world, not always, but I had seen the world for quite a while. Like, I could see this beautiful reality that existed that was so close it was so, and it's so easily attainable and it just seemed so obvious to me, but I, every single time I would tell anybody about it, I would get shut down. Like, I mean, not even like a thought it was like, and mostly it was guys that were in the military. They would just hear like me talking about how it's possible for there to be like a, a positive, happy world for everybody. And they would just not even let it like simmer for a second they would just no nope, that could never happen because you know blah 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 blah. and it got you know draining it was just like well I know it's possible but maybe it just won't happen in my life and then I went to this mushroom ceremony and I couldn't connect with anyone all night I thought it was going to be such a great night and I couldn't talk I couldn't like Everybody was in like happy go lucky, like party mode. And I was like, guys, how do we change the world? <laughs> like, the world needs help. Like, how do we do it? Like, and nobody was there. Nobody was like, you know, and ha most of those people hadn't even done mushrooms before. So it was kind of like, okay, I gotta, I gotta disconnect. I gotta, I gotta go. So I, I, you know, I didn't have much room to go anywhere. The, there were buildings on, you know, there was there wasn't much space uh, there at all. So I went as far away as I possibly could, and um, I just broke out crying. And and this guy Jeremy um, came up to me and he was like, I don't know how long I was over there for, and he was like, I heard you sobbing for the world, <laughs> <laughs> which is exactly what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Um. And I thought it was hilarious uh, that he said it. I mean, at the time, I didn't think it was hilarious. It was just kind of like, how the hell did he know that? But um, we, he was the first person ever to ever, first person ever, ever to be like, well, how do we do that? You know, well, what, what would be the next step? What do we need to do next? Well, how would that work out? Well, how would this work out? Well, what do we do then? He was the first person ever to like actually it even slightly encourage me. And he really genuinely was like, well, what do we do? And I had a phenomenal conversation with him. And he is the one that told me about Gene Keys. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, and it was that night, he didn't tell me that we each had four different keys. So I didn't know. So I got the book 
and I was driving from, I don't know where I was when I finally bought the book. I think I actually had made it to Florida and then was driving somewhere else. And I think, um, and I start going through this massive, massive book and I get to Gene Key 11 in the book, like, you know, Audible's reading it to me and I hear Gene Key 11 and I was like, that's me. And again, I didn't realize that we had keys. Mm -hmm. And then Gene Key 12 came and I was like, that's me too. So now I'm confused because I thought, well, if we had our own keys, maybe we only had one. But now I'm like, well, Gene Key 11 and 12, I know those sound like me. And I was like, those are me. And then when it got to 22, I was like, that's definitely me. And so I didn't know. Um, and then I, I didn't before I got to wherever I was going, I didn't make it quite to Jinky 47, but I listened to a lot of that book on that ride and I was totally sucked in. I mean, I was just totally, completely drawn into this book. And when I finally made it to wherever I was going, I realized we can take this test. We can do go to genekeys.com forward slash free hyphen profile and you can find out your gene keys. And when I saw mine, I was not surprised that 11 and 12 and 22 and then 47, which I was super stoked to look up, you know, immediately when I saw that, uh, were all mine. And I realized, oh, we have four keys and, you know, and they, this whole thing is just, it's, it's, it's so difficult to explain and it's the most magical thing I've ever seen. But I think that Gene Keys is probably the easiest to understand out of the other stuff we're about to see. So you're ready to see your other chart? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, uh, I don't know how much, are you seeing anything I'm doing on my screen or not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. So see, this is what I'm talking about. I got a living library of people in Amazing. my, yeah, in my gene keys. Um, so actually I need to add you right now. Let me add you right there. See, it's easy to keep track. It's not like nice. a big deal. <laughs> Yay. Um, um, so... Which one do I want to show you next? Um, I almost want to get you to pick a number so I can sure. have the key. Any number? Well, hold on. Or... Uh, okay. Well, let's go with, uh, pick out of three numbers. Okay. <clears throat> From zero to nine. No, just one, 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 one through three. Pick a number one, one, two, three. Oh, three. Okay. Good. Okay, cool. All right. So we're going to go with. <clears throat> my body graph which is pretty fun wow they're pretty great i don't think this is my right well i have a feeling someone showed me this as well i'm sorry i have a feeling someone showed me this as well probably um uh, 29 29 07 yeah 80. 1980 yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 7 30 a.m yeah right before breakfast <laughs> okay um, brazil. okay brazil da, 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 da. 
São Paulo. SAO. Oh. SAO? Oh. Uh -huh. P and then space. P A U L O. One word? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't show up. Why didn't. Oh, try that. Maybe. Did I spell that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it'll probably be fine. Okay. So, oh, shit. Try typing in again. S A O. Yeah. Mm -hmm. O. No. Uh, okay. Yeah. Put the letter O in there. I did. And it's. Oh, and then everything disappears? Yeah. Interesting. Brazil? Yeah. Okay. So, try, yeah, try it. It's Sao Paulo, even though I never heard of that. Oh, it might be computer generated. It's choosing it cities is. that I never heard of. Oh, no. But it's fine. It's in a this it's in a general area. What's the um I mean we we don't we don't want to go for general here. We want it to be um accurate. So yeah, keep going. This is amazing. All this is <laughs> yeah, okay, go up, go up. Because we're looking for SAO. S A O. So it's down, uh, down, down. Yeah. S A O after N. It doesn't have. Hmm. I don't know what to say. Try uh, C. Um, okay. S A S A N T O. And then space. Oh, I'm. Um, I'm already seeing it doesn't have it doesn't it doesn't have the city I was gonna say. Hmm. Um. Okay. Well, let's try. Um. <clears throat> let's try something else then. Sure. Maybe that's a sign. Good. Yeah. Let's go with. Um. That's a, that was a big sign. Yeah, that's odd. It's definitely um kind of surprising. Um. Whoops. Well, I accidentally clicked on this. Should we explore this for a second? Yeah. For sure. Okay. Let's let's look and see what this what this chick has to say. <laughs> <laughs> um Oh, that's okay, okay, okay. All right, hold on. So we gotta find out what you are though. We need to know if you're a um if you're a manifester a generator a manifesting generator um, mm, okay here we'll generator go. are you sure yeah yeah nice okay all right cool here we'll go with um this one this one's really uh this one's good the paid version of this is legit the paid version of this, I think, is I, so. It's in. I think it's in Canada that it is like. So it looks more expensive than it is. Um, but I think it's like fifty five dollars. It's amazing. Wow. I got it and I love it. I can show you the extended version of this one and of another one. Um, I'm so obsessed with this. Twenty three. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Na, 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 July nineteen ninety eight zero. How was Burning Man, by the way? I it was amazing. I highly yeah. recommend at least once in a lifetime. I want to go every year. I want to go every year forever, but okay, I haven't then, made it yet. Then you shall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That would be good. <laughs> Brazil. S A O space oh. P. Yeah. P A U L O. All right. Uh,
Oh, come on. Oh. All right. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, this can't be right now. It's not one thirty in the morning. No, that was uh, 19 hours ago. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Got too much stuff clouding the top of my screen. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. That's a lot. Oops. Oh, okay, so you're supposed to get it via email, email. This reminds me, I think last time I did something. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Sweet. Last time you did what? Something like this. I think it was for the 16 personalities. Mm. I haven't done that in a, in a while, but... I was I was very interested in that until I realized there was something way better. <laughs> yeah. All this stuff. So because that's about your personality, right? Like this yeah. is about your soul. Mm. This is about like your imprint in the universe when you were born. The other you can change. I mean, I've changed three times with with Myers Briggs. I've changed at least three times. Yeah. That I that I know of. So I probably changed a lot more than even that actually. Yeah. All right. So, all right, here we go. So All right, this is your basic chart. Um so the open centers are ones that mean that you are you're open to suggestions and ideas and um oh you've got the open g center that's the only this one right here mm -hmm. that's the only open center i have on my body and oh my god has it fucked with me <laughs> it's fucked with me a lot the open g center that is like your identity it's your, um, uh, like, so for myself, what I've read about it is um, having an open G center is we're chameleons. We can fit in anywhere. Mm. We can have a conversation with anyone from, you know, a homeless person to a president. It doesn't matter. We can fit in with anyone and we can talk to anyone and we can have a good conversation with anyone. And, um, and maybe in part because, uh, I mean, I'm assuming the, sh the same is true with you. I don't know, but for myself, certainly, um, lack of identity. I'm like, who the fuck am I, you know? Mm. Well, who am I, you know? And I think that um, in part, that's kind of, I mean, I don't know. It's made me very frustrated on lots of occasions, um, but, uh, but it also leaves room to create yourself again and mm. again and again and again and again. So, um, yeah, so... Uh, there's that. Oh, and love, love is also another thing that is very, um, well, I don't, I can't, certainly can't speak for everybody on this one, but um, challenging, at least for myself in that area, because it's just kind of like, um, uh, 
I don't know, like, who am I supposed to love? And like, that is a theme of your not self. So you will know if you're not on track. So here, we'll come down here. So I'm the same thing. I'm a 512. And what five does that mean? Also. Wow. What's that? <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, oh my God, I'm so excited to look up this right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so five one. Um, th this is really interesting. Um oh my God, I got so much stuff going on over here. Um, okay, so let me show you. Solar plexus, want to respond. So anytime in your life when you feel frustrated, you're not on the right track. If you feel yeah. frustrated, that's not where it's at. Yeah. If you feel satisfaction, you are on the right track. Um, and our strategy is wait to respond. So instead of being like, I have this new great idea and I'm going to go and I'm going to do all this stuff and make all this stuff work without anybody saying something to you about like, you know, you should try this with your life, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like following clues from the universe. And they're very, um, they're very helpful. For example, some girl told me the other day that I should write a book. She's like this, I don't know. I've had a ton of people tell me, I don't want to say a ton, maybe like a dozen though. People tell me that. And now I'm actually like, maybe I should write a book. <laughs> maybe I should actually consider that. So that's the number 12. Well, that's, you know, it's probably been like something along those lines. Right, meaning wow. like maybe if you hear something 12 times or the signs well, have 12 times for you to. That, that could be, but it also might be that I didn't know about this before. Mm. So when other people had told me I should write a book before, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about human design. Well, I knew about it, but I didn't know much about it at all, not in detail by any means. And I didn't know that my strategy was wait to respond. So, but now that I do, and then I had another person tell me that I'm like, maybe I should do it, you know? So, um, so yeah. Okay. So I feel like I should show you this first. So the heretic investigator, this one, I think I don't want to say it'll change your life, but it changed my life. I can tell you that. Uh, just in an interesting, in a very interesting way. In a very interesting way. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. There we go. Okay, so this is us. Okay. Does this, does this seem, does this ring true to you? Public speaker, uh, yeah, microscope, yeah. So I told you I'm a researcher to my core, like for real. And this guy over here is like speaking in front of a bunch of people. Yeah. By the way, anytime we need to get off of here, I'm like, you know, I'm not attached to, I'm not attached to anything. That's one of the things in my life I feel like I've gotten really good at is letting go. So you're like, uh, gotta go. <laughs> okay. This is fun. I'm having fun. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's, I'm supposed to go play music in a little bit, but I okay. can hear the musicians are not ready because I can, the, the music stopped. So we, we, we have some, some time. Okay. All right. We'll go through this. And then, um, I think there was something else I wanted to, sh well, I mean, I'm sure there's a million different things I want to show you, but <laughs> um... we've got to do this again. Okay. Well, Show me um, like the, the next, you know, more of the 1 million things. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Okay. I think you're going to find this really interesting. Cool. All right. Ready? Ready. Should I slow it down a little bit? I know it was a little bit fast. No. No. Okay, good. Yeah. 
With the five slash one profile, we get to the first profile with transpersonal purpose. That's by the way, also my profile. People with a personal purpose find the fulfillment of their purpose through their own process when they live their strategy and authority. People with transpersonal purpose, on the contrary, need interaction with other people because they can fulfill their purpose only in this way. What determines the interaction is decided by the genetic strategy and authority. As a little example, people with personal purpose can spend their whole lives meditating alone on the mountaintop when their strategy and authority guide them so, and their purpose would be fulfilled. People with transpersonal purpose, however, can't do that. They need other people. They have an obligation corresponding to their genetics, and this way find both their fulfillment in life and the fulfillment of their purpose. As this profile bears the huge projection field of the five within itself, I recommend to you to read the first part of the two slash five profile that is about the five, so you can understand this unique aspect of your profile more deeply. Humanity has a general openness to the penetration by the frequency field of the five slash one profile. While profiles that contain a four have their area of influence in their closer environment, the five slash one profile has a potential influence on family, friends, acquaintances, and total strangers. They are tailor-made for the masses. And precisely because they are made for the masses, it's crucial for people with a 5 slash 1 profile to find a safe foundation in life, so they can, based on it, give others practical solutions in times of need. When someone meets a person with a 5 slash 1 profile, they immediately project onto the 5 slash 1 profile being their savior. Okay, this is the thing I was talking about that I think is super significant. So when someone meets someone like you or I, they can instantly project on us their idea of us being like able to save them. Mm. And this isn't good for them or for us, especially mm. like when either we don't have time to fulfill on that or we can't, or there's absolutely no reason for them to think that like we should be trying to like you know, I want to help everybody, right? But I've only got one of me that I know of, and it's impossible at the moment anyway, to be able to do that. And every, like, I don't want to say everybody that you come across, but this will, I mean, and you've probably, I bet anything, you have tons of situations in your life already that you can think of right now that that you can think of people being like looking at you as their savior, um, whether or not you would have admitted to that, you know, a minute ago or not, but you might realize that in retrospect, like, okay, yeah, I can see that. Um, so this one really helped. This one really helped me learn a lot um, mm -hmm. about, about life um, and about how other people see me and about how to kind of navigate that whole situation. So here we go. When someone meets a person with a 5 slash 1 profile, they immediately project onto the 5 slash 1 profile being their savior. They project on the 5 slash 1 profile being the solution to their problems. These problems can be health-wise, job-related, private, sexual, etc. People project on a 5 slash 1 person to be the best partner, the best lover, the best boss, the best employee, the best healer, the best president, the best father, the best mother, etc. But when they make a mistake and the expectations are linked to the projection, they are the devil. Therefore, there are a few rules for people with a 5 slash 1 profile. They must follow their strategy and authority and thereby find something they love and genuinely want to explore and investigate. It should be fulfilling for them and simultaneously of value for others. In this field, they should build a safe and deep foundation which they can use to provide practical solutions for their problems. As soon as they have delivered the answer, they should withdraw. If they stay for too long after the delivery in the field of the other person, more projections are being put on the 5 slash 1 profile they can't fulfill, and then they mutate in the eyes of others from an angel to the devil. Uh, from Messiah to the Antichrist. Doesn't that suck? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know about for you, but I kind of feel like for myself, that might be why I have been such a nomad. Since I turned 18, I was like, I'm out. Like yeah. I just, and I have been kind of a traveler ever since. And wow. I have a feeling it's because of exactly what all of that just said. Yeah. It, ma it makes sense. It, it totally makes sense. Um, at the first part, um, I was, I was aware. I, so I used to, I used to be someone that would enjoy finding quote unquote projects in relationships and, and then being their savior. And yeah. then I broke that cycle maybe five years ago. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, but one thing that I didn't consciously know, 
um, that you know you just showed me here is to be out uh, of the person's feud after the solution has been given. And I wonder if that's the reason why I've been for the last two years working on building teams where I'm only the starter of the projects and then the the team is continues without me being in the team or being in the team so much. Is that is that by your preference or does it just kind of pan out that way typically? Oh, it's new. Oh. It it's new for me uh to to do things in teams instead of doing things alone and to start get things started but uh, do not complete the things let other people complete the things so Um, we're gonna look up another one of your charts can you see what i'm doing right now no okay here let me change this um this is your this is gonna be your business profile i don't know you gotta go here in a minute um so i kind of want to show it to you before before we um Before you bounce off of here, I want to show this to you. Okay. Can you see this now? Yeah. Okay. S, right? Yes, as in sweet. Oops. All right, perfect. Nineteen eighty zero seven twenty nine. Oops. Oh, oh yeah, right there. The top. Yeah, that one's fine. Is that right? It, yeah, that's the state, well, but that works too. Yeah, the first one. For, yeah. Okay. There we go. Finally. So you usually shows like that. Yeah, and who knows? There could be um it's meant. Been it's sending us in the right or... track. Yeah. Okay, so Ooh. <clears throat> nice. All right, so this is what's called your genius profile. And your genius profile is mostly about business. So this over here is what they call your genius force field. Mm-hmm. And when something, when you're like, you know, web or whatever this thing is, um, is along the outer lines. This is where you have the most influence in the world. And then when it's in like this, this is where you have great perception on, um, you have great perception on it and I don't know how to explain that exactly. There's videos, there's, there's like tutorial videos on exactly how this, um, how this thing works, but, um, but here's what I wanted to see over here. So, well, here, let's come over here first. Okay. So your specific talents and skills, cooperative, creative power. Sounds like a good one. Mm -hmm. solution orientation sounds like a good one building relationships building relationships and trust i can totally see that entrepreneurship and sales talent it's definitely a great skill enthusiasm driven enthusiasm driven motivational power Mm. i can definitely see that (laughs) um recognizing growth opportunities i can definitely see that too um over here okay so your power base basically means that when you're in the room regardless of if you even say anything this is what you're going to have an effect on no matter what so promoting communication and interaction is the biggest one over here on your chart 
24 is the second one, which is strengthening management and administration. Um, your, prefer your preferred team role is team supporter. Your leadership style is goal oriented mo and motivating. I can definitely, I can see that. Your motivation is assessing and finding solutions. That's great. I, I, I love people that look for solutions instead of just hmm. like complaining about problems. Uh, perspective is political identifying power structures. I have the same one on that one. Cool. Uh, your cooperative profile, it looks like, well, I know you said you're used to doing things independently and now it's been in smaller organizations, but you may be well suited to do things in large organizations. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the teams have been maybe 10 in the team, wow. but it's so that we can work in large. So basically, I am, I've am i been coaching coaches to bring life coaching to tech companies as a health benefit. Nice. So we're going to be working in large organizations. Wow, that's great. Cool. Um, well, and your second one up here looks like it is independent. So I think that might be in front of your keyboard um, while you're thinking or playing music. You said it's keyboard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keyboard. Yeah. So this is also another profile that I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting the up upgraded version of. I have the upgraded version of this and it's so much more extensive. Like it's like, this is just, I mean, a, a fraction of a tip of the iceberg compared mm. to um, what this whole thing is. So, but based on some of the things that you were saying, I was curious. I really wanted to see um, where this was at. So, nice. okay. Well, I feel like I should uh, let you go and um, maybe send you a list of these different things that you can like, you know. Yeah. And um, and, maybe know, we can do a second, a second, a part two of this and then sure. go um do something either i don't know to, what's the next step to say uh i think more people you could probably you could probably share of what some of your visions are for the future oh man <laughs> <laughs> so that as people hear and see you um some of them may choose to help you and support you when oh, your vision that would be great <laughs> That would be wonderful because yeah. you used a lot of help. That's one of the things I've been used to being a solo entrepreneur my entire life. And mm. I realized, you know, a little while ago, I can't do a fraction of the things that I want to do on yeah. my own. I can't even keep track of my own schedule. Like I need someone, I need like, I need help. Yeah. I need lots of help. <laughs> so yeah, that sounds wonderful. Okay, cool. So um, maybe, uh, we can do this next Sunday, uh, Monday after Stephen comes back to life, uh, transformed. <laughs> the three of yeah, us can if, get if get he a, comes back. He might if he comes to back get away into the ethers. I don't think he would. I don't think he would leave that. Yeah, or he just becomes a cloud or something, <laughs> and he's he's among he's with us, but we would not know, and yeah. he'll communicate through us when we meditate. I think he would at least leave me a note or something. I don't think he would just bounce like that, but I don't think he would. He wouldn't do it. And maybe the note is is in code and it would take <laughs> us a lifetime to decode the it's note. It's in Braille in the clouds. In the <laughs> and we don't know. We need to figure that out. Yes. I don't all think of that. I don't it'd, think you would ask. It would be a good question. movie. It would be a, a movie that's a very long and beautiful movie. <laughs> A very long movie. It would be a very long movie. It would be a very hard movie to write, I'm sure. How do we make this thing end? I don't know. It's a never-ending movie. We have, and then we can be have it be interactive so that people can choose the ending. Oh, that's great. I like that. That sounds very complicated from like a like a actually making it happen perspective, but um, looking at it just from an outside view, it sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you know about Abraham Hicks? Of course. Okay, cool. Were you going to suggest something or? Uh, no, it just reminds me how she talks sometimes about, I don't know, it's something about like focus on what you want or focus on the feeling and the, the how, let the universe come up with the how things are going to get done. Like so focus like on, focusing on like the end result and yeah like the universe come up the how, and the yeah. feelings yeah yeah that shit's real that's <laughs> it's so real like honestly it really is I got super lazy about it for a really long time and I really have realized like you know I'm such like I'm a person that truly believes in just infinite possibilities and it's almost made it complicated for me to really focus on a reality that I want and it's like you just need to pick any any reality just pick a any reality and focus on it and no matter what you can just kind of start to navigate from there but start focusing like stop stop just letting life be you know random because it's not that's not where I want you know I don't want I don't want that yeah at all i want i want i'm a very particular person so i really should start to focus on exactly what it is that i want and if things you know if you want to change things and change them as you go but you know it's really important to really focus on on whatever it is that you feel like is your desire whatever it is yeah just pick one just pick something yeah you, you can always change it you can always change it. Or you just keep adding. Just keep adding stuff. Oh, keep adding. Yes. Yes, and. Yes, and. Yes, and. Yes, and. Yep. Cool. Well, Claire, <laughs> thank you so much today for sharing your time and your wisdom. Absolutely. With me. And everyone watching, listening, uh, please, you know, comment below. What is it? A takeaway? One or two or three mm -hmm. takeaways that you, uh, you have uh, gotten from this conversation? It was jam packed with good info, and I would be super to... curious to find out too. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Me too. And I love your I love your um plant necklace. That's what it looks like from here right now. It's yeah, Dharma. Beautiful. It's perfect. Dharma. Yeah. This, this is my pal. This is love she it. harmonizes the vibes of me being around the mic, the the computer, the camera, the lights. Dharma has, you know, brings green. It brings green. It brings all the green. Yeah. She smells good too. I'm sure. <laughs> all right, all right Brando. This was so, a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I'm glad that Steven, uh, I'm glad the other person did not accept the Steven's <laughs> invitation. Because we got to have this amazing <laughs> yeah. connection time biohacker health and fitness that's peace right sign necklace red light bundle, bundle of joy that's right claire awesome like, mike <laughs> exactly that mike that has a shock yeah oh you got kombucha amazing right. which one do you have blueberry gingerberry gingerberry that's lovely all right <laughs> i think you just inspired me to go get the kombucha that i have it in the fridge for two weeks and i haven't opened it yet so oh there you go i'm jealous i wish i was yeah okay uh, all right well, we'll have yeah well thank you yes um i'll go have some fun i'll um i'll probably do a little video of of us singing and send it over to you and steve okay even and then i hope to see you next week with our our friend and then we can uh continue you can tell us more about your the vision for your, the future, the visions sure. that you have, so that uh, more people can learn about you and choose to support you. I found out I was a Gemini, and that's why this guy Jeremy that I met that night that told me about Gene Keys, he was like, "You can jump up, and you can see the world in the way that you know is possible, and then you can come back down." and bring that vision to us. I was like, wow, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> so 
So yeah, I do. I have a lot. I have a, a totally different vision of reality than you know anybody that I know. Well, not yeah. No, I think so. <laughs> so wonderful. And I would like it to happen because my thing is to manifest idealism, which doesn't exclude anyone. You know, in an idealistic world, everybody's happy because yeah. I can't pass somebody I can't meet somebody I can't like know that somebody's not happy and feel like life is great it's like well you know that and that right there that was actually one of the biggest the biggest thing I ever got from smoking DMT was the fundamental core belief that I am everyone and everyone is me. That fundamental belief about everybody being one. That's the biggest thing I got out of that. And I've never been able to look at anybody or to talk to anybody the same ever again after that. Because I fundamentally believe that I am everybody. So it gave me a gigantic shift into like just this feeling of oneness that I'm just super grateful for. Mm. I love yeah. that. So I love. Thanks for the reminder. The oneness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The oneness. Oneness. Awesome. So we'll end at oneness, and then we'll begin. We'll continue with oneness next All time right. we chat. Thank Sounds you, Claire. Good. <laughs> yeah. Thank Have you. A good evening, that. there. You too. In the East Coast, and I'll chat with you soon. For everyone watching, listening, thanks for tuning in. Comment below uh, a couple of things you've taken away from this conversation, and tune in next time, uh, Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific, where Stephen Klein, the Super Connector, myself, and hopefully Claire will be here to answer any of your questions and continue the conversation of oneness, of biohacking and all human design <laughs> human design thank you claire okay bye for now